go with the Daytona 500. Oh, baby, anticipation, anticipation. Green flag is in the air. Buggity, buggity, buggity. Let's go racing, guys. Side. That brought Matt Kenseth to him as they form up double file and hit the banking in three. Three wide, Marcus Ambrose in the middle, back at 10th place. You see Matt Kenseth in that 20 car, though, on the inside. He's been one of the drivers that's been able to pull a line on the bottom of the racetrack all weekend long. And a three car leads the first lap in the Daytona 500. How exciting. Denny Hamlin puts his Toyota in front of Dylan Chevrolet. Here comes the 24 of Jeff Gordon on the outside with Kurt Busch in tow. Yeah, I believe in that 11 car Larry gets in front. What we've seen down here might be bad news for these other guys. That car has been so, so fast, and particularly when it's out front. You talked about him being undefeated in Speed Weeks. Remember, he won the last race of the year in 2013 at Homestead Miami Speedway. Casey Kane, the five, now the man in the middle. Two distinct rows and the 20. That yellow and black Toyota of Kenseth up in front of Kane now as he and Trevor Bain try to make something happen through the center lane. Jeff Gordon picks up Kenseth, moving in front of him to become the lead car in that inside draft. And Kyle Larson's in the wall for the second time. Yeah, he got in it down here in turns one and two, Mike, and I, I didn't think there was any damage to the car, maybe a little cosmetic, but he's in it again. This is one lap ago, Darrell, watch the 42. Yeah, he just kind of kissed it right there, and I thought he's okay, but might be having a tire going down. And this is what just happened up in turn three, and Larson has made it to pit road. Heavy right, damage right, right front. Surprisingly, in these first three laps, the field has split into three distinct packs. Yeah, and Mike, that group back there with Tony Stewart, Danica Patrick, and some of them, they have just kind of like formed up their own little group back here, anticipating, I think, maybe this start was going to be a little more chaotic than it was. I tell you, one driver we better keep an eye on is Kyle Busch in that 18 car. Kyle Busch started back in the 33rd position, and he's already cracked the top 10 in eighth in just six laps, four laps. Larry, the draft is so huge. This car this year is pushing a little bigger hole in the air. And when you're way back like that, you get the advantage of the draft off to all the cars. And of course, we know how Kyle is. He can pick his way through traffic about as good as anybody I've ever seen. And he's done it again today. Rookie Kyle Larson lost a lap with that pit stop and repair. 26 cars in the lead pack, then a long gap. About four seconds to Joey Logano, but four cars are about to uh, about to reach him. So here's the lead 25 off turn four and back to the start finish line to complete the fifth lap. And our pole sitter, Austin Dillon, he's drifted back to about 15th spot. He's just not getting any help on that inside line. We've seen all week long for the inside line to work, it takes an organized group of drivers to be able to pull up toward the front. Right now, Mike, it, it, it's kind of like taking off in an airplane. You know, the strike off of this race, you take off, you got to keep your seat belt on, your tray table's all put up. But after we get squared away here a little bit, these guys will get their legs under them and they'll start making some moves. Just don't ring that call button. <laughs> no, don't get out of your seat. At the strike, Hamlin uses the high side and that wide radius to retake the lead at least for a moment. And on the in-car radio, Martin Truex said 
it just blew up. Well, that's that's his backup car, and of course they had to. Yeah, something at the bottom or something. Feel like we saw yeah, it. Big. It blew up. That looked had no oil pressure. Drain away. So. NASCAR has observers around the racetrack atop those Sunoco diamonds on the outside of each corner and they relayed fluid on the racetrack. So as Truex coasts in the garage caution waves for the second time. Now let's go back to the first caution flag and the run on the pit road that Larry predicted some cars would be going out as others were coming in. Watch the yellow car of Matt Kenseth the red and white one of Trevor Bain was there contact there because Kenseth goes right around and then forward into his pit stall. Boy, he was sure way out on pit road to be that close of his to his pit box. Well, it's a good thing he was because look, I mean, he just basically spins you right into the box. We'll explain that in a moment, but first watch the nine of Marcus Ambrose and the 10 of Danica Patrick. Yeah, the problem Marcus Ambrose in that nine was running six, did fuel only. Danica Patrick was one in 31st. This is what I was talking about. Ambrose is leaving, and Danica Patrick, you're riding with her here. She's not even made it to her pit box. Yet. And, and Larry, remember something. This is the first time since we've been down here that all cars are on pit road at one time. We've had the field divided with the unlimited races and the, uh, the sprint race, but this is the first time all cars have been on pit road. The first, that's the first time right there. Greg Biffle got the free pass on the first caution and on this one it'll be Kyle Larson. Here is Matt Kenseth who told his crew he could not find his pit sign. So it went once he did he hit the brakes hard that locked the rear brake and spun. It was his mistake. That's what it looked like to me like he just had too much rear brake in the thing and when he got on him real hard the thing just spun around. I'm not sure that Trevor Bain in the 21 no. had anything to do with it. But that makes a lot more sense that he was still that far out toward the edge of pit road that close to his pit box. I think since it's only been five laps since the restart I think we'll see strategy all over the place again with possibly drivers staying out some coming in taking tires some doing fuel only. And, and oh by the way I, that pit stall that the 20 car has Matt Kenseth that's my favorite pit stall. It's right there at the opening. It used to lead to Victory Circle, uh, but that pit stall, thank goodness for him, uh, there was an opening. He was able to spin right into the box. Marcus Ambrose is the first of the takers on pit road. He might have had a little damage in that bump with Patrick. Krista? Yeah, right now they hadn't really been talking about damage. It was just a little bit of a tap, but it was enough to send Danica, as you documented. But Marcus Ambrose is coming back in. They took fuel only on the first stop. Matt? And Matt Kenseth is still saying the car, a tick on the tight side for the 20. Since the fact they're in the back, they're going to go four tires on the 20 machine, Steve. And Matt, Dale Art Jr. pulls away. His crew chief, Steve Latart, said, do the opposite of the field. Come in, fuel only for the 88. 33 laps complete of 200, and now Kyle Busch leads. Daytona 500 resumes under green as they come to the line on a dry racetrack after a six hour rain delay. Kyle Busch approaches the restart zone and he and Casey Kane are on it. Green flag. Yeah, let's go racing. Alongside his teammate Kyle Busch in the yellow car. Yeah, well, let's just ride along, take it easy for a little while. What do you say, Larry? I don't <laughs> think that's going to be the. Point. I don't think so. <laughs> let's just get real. Three wide. Let's go. Let's get it done. Cole Witt in that 26 car, Marcus Ambro in the nine, making it three wide in the back in the middle of the pack. And on a green racetrack, scrubbed clean of, ass of rubber by the rain, they're finding out now at 195 miles an hour how these cars handle differently than they did this afternoon. That's exactly what I expected. The track is, I mean, you can run anywhere you want to right now. Your tires are good, the track is cold, it's got a lot of grip, and you feel very confident. Man, you're going to see some racing. I tell you, you're going to see them get it on right now. It's cooled off, and you said the engines will make more power. The cars will handle better. 
Will the drivers be braver? Well, well I'm already seeing that. <laughs> <laughs> Brad Keselowski, the 2012 series champion in that white number two Ford. Coroner Roger Penske celebrated a birthday this week. Keselowski would like to give him that Harley Earl trophy for the second time as a present. Man, one of the hardest things, and it makes me so nervous, is when they come through here three wide through this trial. Well, low banking, 18 degrees, running 200 mile an hour through here side by side. That's a handful. Casey Kane in that five, getting a little bit of help from Paul Menard in the 27. Seems like right now he's making that bottom groove work. Larry, nobody's going anywhere for a while. <laughs> <laughs> we have ourselves a lot. Yes, we do. <laughs> Two Toyotas in the top lane, two Chevrolets on the bottom. Fighting for the lead in the Daytona 500, back under green. Completing 50 laps, 125 miles this time by. Casey Mears in that 13 car, he had quite a little line assembled at the top. Brian Vickers in the 55 shut the door on them as they were coming through turn four. The margin of error when you're running three wide like this is so small. If somebody moves over a little bit or wiggles a little bit, that's when you have a problem. And the degree of difficulty, it's as high as it's going to get right now. Looking at Keslowski in the middle, and that's where Kyle Busch is right now because Casey Kane down to the bottom with the 27 of Paul Menard is gunning for the lead. And here comes Keslowski in the two right up behind Kyle Busch in the 18. They're going to try to make that middle work. There's Denny Hamlin, Kyle's teammate. That is three wide, six rows deep at 195 miles an hour. Folks, I hope you stayed up and uh, you're ready for some uh, exciting action here at Daytona because we have got it. We have 25 drivers running in less than a second of each other right there in that pack coming at you. We just couldn't do this earlier today. The track didn't have the grip in it. The track was slick. The cars were sliding around. The guys knew they had to be careful. Now they've got all the grip they need. They can do anything they want to with this race car. Some drivers have chosen to hang out at the back of the pack, and the tension that's evident up here near the front shows you why. Well, the spotters, you know, the drivers are busy, but the spotters are busier because they're trying to talk their guy through this mess and uh, they, they've got to be on their games. They got to be eyes and ears watching what's going on. And what I love about my driver buddies, they make this look so easy. Ah, nothing to it. We're three wide, we're 195, 200 mile an hour. Yeah, nothing to it. Folks, these guys right now are about as tight as you're gonna get all night long. Two by two. Two Toyotas on the outside, two Chevys on the bottom. It's just like Noah's Ark, except Brad Keselowski in that white Ford number two right in the middle. Yeah, Noah would have gotten there a little quicker if he'd been one of these arcs, I might say. <laughs> it's like it's the first time all week long we really were not seeing as Denny Hamlin oh. in the 11 goes all the way from the top to the bottom of the racetrack. What a move, elevator drop. Hamlin down to the bottom, sweeps up high, picks up Kyle Busch again. He was trying to break the draft of those other two lanes. He's trying to break out of the bubble, that big bubble of air. He's trying to bust out of there, and he can get his teammate Kyle Busch to push him. He might be able to get out of there and get out in the front. But, Darrell, you said it before we went back racing. This racetrack, it's given these drivers confidence. That's what allowed him to make that move right there. Oh, uh, they are happy with their cars right now. I'm sure that they're just talking about, you know, where am I, who am I running with, and what, what, what's going on on the racetrack, not even talking about handling issues. How about that silver car? Number 32, Terry Labonte, two-time Sprint Cup champion has said after Thursday's qualifying race, this will be his final Daytona 500. He is tied with Richard Petty for second on the all-time list with 32 starts. Dave Marcus has been in 33 500s. Well, he just motored by one of his former teammates there, Jeff Gordon. Terry used to drive for uh, Henrik Motorsports, and uh, Terry's giving that old 32 car a freaky start. A pretty good ride tonight. Seventh place. But that's the unpredictability of the Daytona 500. We have said it. If your car will crank when they say, ladies and gentlemen, start your engines, you can be in position to win this race. 
seems like a long time ago we said as Kevin Harvick who you're riding with has just laid down the fastest lap of the race. At the top of the day we said 43 drivers woke up this morning in Daytona Beach with the same thought I can win the Daytona 500. Terry Labonte among them running in the top 10 at 54 laps as you ride with Kevin Harvick. I think our guys, you know, I think our guys are pretty good at prognosticating about who's going to be good because we know the 11 and the 18 are good, the Gibbs cars. Michael kept talking about the Kozlowski in the two car. He had run with him a little bit. Michael thought he had a really fast car. And here these guys are all running at the front, along with Brian Vickers in that 55 car. Yeah, I think all three of those drivers in the bottom line, they have had fast race cars all week long. You talked about Brad Keselowski in the two, Jeff Gordon in the 24, Joey Logano in the 22. Just this man right here, Denny Hamlin, with what he's done this week, has overshadowed all these other drivers. Oh, the 52 there is falling back. That's Bobby Labonte. He's got something going on or else he's just trying to get out of there. Up front, Kyle Busch. Casey Kane in Toyota's the Ford of Brad Keselowski. Brian Vickers, Jeff Gordon. Joey Logano. Keslowski. Whatever lane was not on point, the other lane he was leading, and he's finally brought this bottom groove right to the front of the pack again. Yeah, that number two car, that Miller Light car, that thing is going somewhere. He's got some speed. He's right there with the Toyotas, and uh, he's shown that all week. So uh, for Keslowski to hang, hang tough on that inside. Here comes Paul Menard down on the inside in the 27 car. He's got a run going. And he's got a line of drivers he's bringing with him. He's got to pull right up there to Jeff Gordon in that 24. That's how you know the cars are handling really good, Larry, when you can dive in on the bottom of three like that and hold your line. Because normally the cars want to wash up a little bit. That thing stuck right on that yellow line. What, what, what you don't want to do is get too comfortable doing this. you got to stay on guard. You can't let your guard down here because, uh, you know, even though cars feel good and it's going good and everybody's racing good, you can't let your guard down. you got to stay on the offense. The first 25 cars are covered by one second. That's the gap from first to 25th. Kyle Busch holds the lead. Good thing nobody said, let's just ride a while. We're under green in the Daytona 500. NASCAR's most popular driver, Dale Earnhardt Jr., won the 500 in 2004. This is his 15th running of the Great American Race, and now he has led in 10 of those 15 tries. Here's the pass on the 99 of Carl Edwards. And I don't think there's any mistake in it. These guys have been told there could be some weather coming because I, I see a lot of intensity. Look at the 18 trying to force in front of, a, of, my, of the uh, 43 dark car of Elmerov. I mean, these guys are starting to make some pretty bold moves here. Watch Dale Jr. They're not messing around right now. They're going like it's going to be the last lap. But watch how Jr. drives. I, I, I love to watch the guy because look where his hands are. He puts his right hand back over here going down the straightaway. Then when he gets to the corner, he usually slides that right hand, look, slides that right hand right over on top of the left, back to the right. All right, let's take a closer look at tonight's race. Fastest lap of the race, the pole sitter, Austin Dillon, number three, of the fuel injection in the EC unit, ECU unit, that thing will adjust the engine to the conditions. And the conditions are ideal. We got pretty pretty good air right now. It's, it's cool, it's moist, and you can make max power right now, and that unit is tuning that engine to perfection. 
You know, Daryl and Mike, we have 63 laps to go. With the way that last set of green flag stops went, every driver out there has to make one more stop. And I think every driver can make it on one more stop. And those pit stops should start about lap 158, roughly about 20 laps from now. Another top contender has fallen by the wayside. Tony Stewart has taken his car to the garage after fuel pressure problems. And the 20 of Matt Kenseth may have had an issue, Matt. Mike, during his pit stop, we told you from lap 100 on, Kenseth had been complaining about his right rear tire chattering, and he had a hard time holding on to the race car. Now, the good news for Kenseth fans, here in the pit, when they took the, the tires off, they looked at the right rear, a huge gash. The tires still held air, but the Goodyear engineers look things over. They think that might be what Kenseth was feeling in his race car, and he hasn't reported anything since. The crew says no news is good news, Steve. And Matt Kyle, uh, excuse me, Kurt Busch in the 41, rather, still running strong, but his crew chief, Daniel Canost, has told him that they're he has a quarter panel brace in the right rear quarter panel that's broken and is causing some of that sheet metal in that right rear quarter panel to flap. So they're a little bit concerned about that in the 41 pits of Kurt Busch. Thanks, Steve. 139 of 200 laps are complete. There's Jamie McMurray Chevy for Bush on the outside. A Chevy in front, Dale Jr. and three fast boards right behind him. Crash out of turn number four. A multi-car pileup. Eric Almarola, his car all turn up. That is Michael Waltrip, who will not win his third Daytona 500. David Gilliland's car is crashed. Almarola's gone straight to the garage with his number 43. Gilliland stuck in the mud, and Danica Patrick. And, and Mike, Danica, she pounded that outside wall head on first. Let's watch the action coming out of turn number four. And let's have a look for Eric Almarola on the right side in the 43. That, it looked like the 33 car of Brian Scott, something there was Danica right there. Man, that was a lick. Scott down right next to and Kevin oh. Harvick makes contact in the yep. four. That's what shot Scott. It. Yep. That's what shot the 33 up the hill. I knew something had to happen because he uh, just abruptly the 33 abruptly turned to the right and went up the hill. We got our pole sitter involved. Danica Austin Dillon Danica Patrick Michael Waltrip. Among those involved. Walter coming off the outside wall. He collects Justin Allgaier in the 51. Paul Menard at 27. Been fast all night. Paul just can't catch a break down here this week. David Gilliland into the mud and Ryan Newman taking evasive action. Here's the hand pan on Almarola's car. Say hi. hit with a safer barrier for last year's pole sitter. Now here comes Danica. Watch that green car shoot across the track. Are you all right, Dean? Oh, man. Okay. Yeah, 
God, what the hell happened? Boy, yeah, it took a pretty hard shot right there to the right front there. Patrick hit the wall in an area of that straightaway that is not protected by the safer barrier. That was nearly 200 miles an hour into solid concrete. And she had such high hopes after finishing eighth here a year ago and leading laps in the Daytona 500, not the way she wanted it to end. Yeah, you see the four car of uh, Kevin Harvey. He moves up a little bit, gets into the left front of Brian Scott in the 33, and from there it's on. It's just on from there. Um, Elmerola on the outside there in the 43, he gets sideways, comes back down. Little damage Boy. for Casey Kane and Menard. Jeff Gordon just barely gets through. There's our post sitter, Austin Dillon. Three of the Richard Childress racing drivers involved. Almost a fourth had Ryan Newman in the 31 not gotten stopped there on the front stretch. You've heard from Danica, Michael Waltrip and David Gilliland both climbed out of their cars. Most everyone else has driven away. Here is your leader, Dale Earnhardt Jr. at 147 laps. And this storm system is about 30 miles away, the front edge of it. And look what's going on out in the Gulf of Mexico with all that lightning activity. And considering Dale Earnhardt Jr. could run to probably at least lap 170 with these cautions, maybe even further than that, I would not be surprised to see them stay out because you can't make it on one stop from here. Oh, yeah. I think I'd stay out right now for sure. Greg Biffle took fuel only on that stop. He's our leader in the 3M4, Dale Earnhardt Jr. The National Guard Chevy alongside as they get the green flag. 47 laps to go. And I, and I think Michael nailed it. I mean, the gloves are off. This, this is going to be a this going to be a fight to the end now. Uh, I mean, these guys, there, there's weather. We know that the race is coming down to the uh, end here. This is when it gets real serious. It's entirely likely the next flag could end this race. How big a gamble, Larry, not taking tires for Biffle? I don't think it's a gamble because we've seen racing at night as Jimmy Finning told Carl Edwards, tires are not wearing, tires are not making a difference. We want to stay up front out of the eye of the storm. Remember in the un Unlimited, they ran 60 laps and never changed tires. And so I don't think you have to worry about the tires. I think they're pretty good. Tires versus track position. Both of Tommy Baldwin's cars in the top 10. He got a top 10 finish last year here. Reed Sorensen and Michael Annette, ninth and 10th. But boy, they've got work to do. Biffle, Earnhardt, Johnson, Edwards, Keslowski, the front five. Yeah, Michael Annette, Reed Sorensen, they're side by side. You see them back there on the fifth row, just in front of Kyle Busch in that 18. Well, we see that four car, and he must have some damage from that wreck because saw quite a bit of sparks coming out from the side of that car. Look like it from the back. Jeff Gordon, we haven't talked about him much uh, for a while. Oh, and man, look at Kurt Busch in a 41 car. That quarter panel, that fender brace is definitely creating a parachute on the right side of his car. Larry mentioned Kyle Busch. He got the free pass on that caution flag for that 12 car pileup. That put him back on the lead lap and right into the thick of things. Yeah, yeah. He's, he's up in the top 10 already, and he just got the free pass. I think that just goes to show you what a great race car he has. And, that, and what an interesting paint job he has on his car. One in 100. You know what that means? One peanut out of 100 makes it into an M&M. &M. Now, I had to find out from Kyle what it meant because I knew it meant something, and he told me that. He's on the inside next to his brother as Dale Earnhardt Jr. and Greg Biffle continue to battle for the lead. See those two Joe Gibbs drivers right there side by side. Matt Kenseth in the 20 on the bottom. Denny Hamlin in the 11 up top. They had made their way back in the pack. Now here they come back toward the front. I'll tell you what, though, that 88 car is pretty impressive. He's been able to hang up there in the front. Uh, Jimmy Johnson looks like he's going to try to get up here and go with Biffle maybe, but even still, Junior's hanging right there, man. This is a contract year for Greg Biffle with Roush Fenway Racing. Other teams have kind of sniffed a little interest, and wouldn't his stock go up if he could win this 500? Steve. Mike, interesting note on that 16 car. Crew Chief Matt Pusha told me this morning they built two brand new super speedway cars. 
with the hopes of running here in Daytona. But the car Greg's in now actually ran last year. It was just had had better numbers in the wind tunnel and it just had more speed. So a tried and true race car for Greg Biffle. Greg Biffle's between a rock and a hard place right now because he's got two fast drivers and he just keeps going back and forth blocking Jimmy Johnson and Dale Earnhardt Jr. There he goes to the bottom to block Earnhardt. And of course that messes up the draft off his car, which, you know, it'll help Junior a little bit and then he'll go over and help Jimmy Johnson at 48 a little bit. In the meantime, Junior's trying to side draft. Watch him get over next to the 48, get a little pull there. Here's Carl Edwards. Carl would like to get up in the mix in the 99 and there's Greg Keselowski. So, Bunch of Fords up here ganging up on the Chevys right now. Back behind them, a whole bunch running three wide. 43 laps to go in the Daytona 500 after a six and a half hour rain delay. Since then, we've had just one caution flag, but it was a big one, a 12 car pileup. Greg Biffle, the first of 27 cars on the lead lap. He's one of 19 race leaders, 36 lead changes, just three caution flags. Well, Biffle, Guts, you know, he, Lauren, Graham. Yeah, Biffle, Biffle bragged on his car. Remember qualifying, he was so excited, and he said, man, we finally got speed back in our cars. He's been happy all week with the thing, and here he is, man, out front when it counts. He's up front, but Daryl, he's looked like three-lane Wayne up there, <laughs> up to the bottom, down to the bottom, up to the top, right up the middle, and now, Dale Earnhardt Jr. pulls right alongside. Yeah, he wasn't able to get to the bottom quick enough that time because that 88 of Dale Earnhardt Jr. was right there with his teammate, Biffle's teammate, Carl Edwards in the 99 right behind him. Yeah, Larry, I, I'm convinced that the last uh, 100 miles or so, that 88 car has been the best car. He's been able to run up front. He's been able to get out front. And uh, right now, he's alongside of Biffle. Edwards there behind him gives him a little shot. They probably will be able to clear Biffle and take the lead. That is some tight drafting right there amongst that front 10 or 15. Look how tight they are. Two by two, just all over each other. And back behind them, here's a, there's some three wide racing going on. There just isn't room on Noah's Ark for all this. Three by three. You know, if you're up front, you're just hoping nothing happens. If you're back in the back, you're trying to make something happen. You want something to happen. 40 laps to go, 100 miles left in the Daytona 500. Let's go back to the garage in Krista. Danica Patrick has walked out of the care center. Danica, was that the hardest hit you've ever taken and, and how do you feel right now? Hmm, I don't know, it feels like they're all pretty hard, unfortunately. Um, I think more than anything, I'm just upset that the GoDaddy car felt really good. It was the best car I'd had all speed weeks and um, seemed like we could catch whoever and seemed like we could move around and make lanes, help lanes out and move move around and move forward at the end of the day. And uh, so I felt like everything was going pretty well. So it's just upsetting, you know, I think that it's a sort of culmination of sitting around all day and, you know, so uh, it's a bummer, but it's, you know, that's kind of the excitement of Speedway racing is that anything can happen. And um, it was unfortunate that I was on the short end of the accident, but uh, that's the kind of thing that happens. and. You know, I appreciate everyone sticking around and watching, and we'll go get them at Phoenix. Glad you're okay. Thanks, Danica. Thanks, Krista. Dale Earnhardt. Whoa, here we go. Big crash again. Turn four. It's Calamity Corner. There's rookie Reed Sorensen sliding down off the banking. Big damage to the forward of Marcus Ambrose, number nine. And caution waves with 38 laps to go. Marcus Ambrose with a bunch of damage there. The seven car. Something, something seemed, uh, somebody broke loose in the pack. I couldn't tell if there was contact. Rookie Michael Annette, heavy damage on his pilot Chevy. Marcus Ambrose. And let's have a look. Watch the three of our pole sitter Austin Dillon. start finish line and he drops down in front of teammate Jimmy Johnson. They timed that out beautifully. Uh, Junior need to get down in front of 
Jimmy Johnson in a 48. He did. Those guys are going to be hard to handle here at the end of this race. Right now, the inside line is moving. Greg Bifflin, that 16, is trying to get to the rear bumper of Reed Sorensen in that 36. Sorensen could draft in the front with anybody, but at the front of that line, he might be holding Greg Biffle back. Yeah, and, and he has to be real, real careful because Greg Biffle won't be very patient with Reed Sorensen. Greg Biffle will say, this guy's holding me up. You need to get out of my way. So Reed needs to be on his, he needs to be on his toes. Trevor Bain checks and released to the infield care center. He is okay. After bringing out that caution with a crash, the fifth one of the night, Jeff Gordon up the outside with Denny Hamlin. This could get interesting as Kevin Harvick comes up to cover the spot. Yeah, both the Joe Gibbs drivers of Denny Hamlin, the 11, Matt Kinsel in the 20 jumped up there, but then Jeff Gordon in the 24 goes back to the bottom line. Man, they are tight off a of turn two over there. Boy, not much room at all. Woo! Hang on, fellas. The last nine Daytona 500s that went the distance, eight times we had a caution in the last 10 laps. But Larry, look, look at, the, I can know I've said this already, but look, look who's at the front now. We've had different guys lead this race, run up front all night long. But when it comes down to showtime, when it comes down to who's going to get the big trophy, the Harley trophy, who, who's always going to be in the front? 11 laps to go. This restart, where Dale Earnhardt Jr. times it to get out just ahead of Jimmy Johnson enough to slide down in front of his teammate and try to hold everybody off. One of the things I don't like, and they've been getting away with it, fine, that's all good, but I don't know how much longer it can last, are some of these quick moves. Double moves called double trouble. And swinging down in front of somebody and swinging back to the outside, they're gonna have to watch that as it gets closer to the end here. Krista, how about that second place car? Oh, oh, Jimmy Johnson. Kurt Busch goes for a spin off turn number four. Slides toward the inside. We're staying green as the starter flashes open hands. Ten laps to go to the field as they head off to turn number one. Bush is in the grass, sliding around to pit road. Wheels are on the pavement. Maybe he can get it out of harm's way. Field out of turn two. I don't know the 41. Yeah, he got her. Got it fired up, he's backing up, he's in the pit lane, so he's definitely gonna get going. Jeff Gordon down to the bottom in the 24, and now it is three Hendrick Chevys. One, two, three on the inside. Kurt Busch got away, we stay green, nine laps to go. There comes Kevin Harvick in that four car, though. Jimmy Johnson jumped up in front of him in that 48. The strongest cars we've seen down here all at the front right now. The 11's there, Hamlin, the four of Harvick, We've seen uh, Jeff Dale Jr. of the, the strongest cars that have been here all week are at the front of the field right now. Is that one of those guys going to win this race? And the best drivers, Darrell. The four drivers in the front have a combined seven Daytona 500 wins between them. These are the guys that know how to win the Daytona 500. The guys you see at the front right now. Jeff Gordon has, what, three wins down here. Jimmy Johnson, Je Jeff Gordon got two wins, sorry. Jimmy Johnson's got two. I mean, these guys are good. Hill Jr.'s got one. Eight laps to go. Harvick knows the way to victory lane. And trying to get there, Brad Keselowski, Kyle Busch, Denny Hamlin, Reed Sorensen still there with Matt Kenseth and Carl Edwards the top ten. Yeah, Reed didn't get a great restart. He kind of fell back through the field there. But, man, that old 36 car, it comes up through the middle pretty good. Look at Brad Keselowski in that two car just pushing Jeff Gordon in that 24. And still in that lead pack, we talked to him at the top of the day, talked about him, Terry Labonte, in his 32nd and final Daytona 500. He's still within 1.2 seconds of the lead. Hey, if it's your last race, make it a good one, buddy. Texas Terry. Jeff Gordon jumps to the outside, the 24 car trying to take his second spot away from Keselowski. Seven laps to go, looking back from Dale Earnhardt Jr. at Brad Keselowski, one, two. Boy, you make the wrong move. Jeff Gordon made somewhat of a bad move there, and it's going to cost him. And I keep seeing Kyle Busch in that 18 car talking about drivers that want to win the Daytona 500. It wasn't that many laps ago. He was a lap down. Here he is fighting in the top five. Man, look at those cars move around. We're running over 200 miles an hour, and these guys are using every bit of the skill they have 
They're trying to, oh, oh got another the, car. Up goes around. Ryan Newman, Justin Allgaier, Brian Scott, Terry Labonte. Dang, gone. Cole went right at the back of the field. Unless they can get this cleaned up in a hurry, this is not going to be good for those drivers up front that are very marginal on fuel. Parker Kligerman involved as well. Both the Swan Racing cars torn up in this one. Well, they did that earlier in the week, and they were just lucky to piece everything together to make this Daytona 500. And now they've got a couple of more torn up cars. What a bad bunch of luck for them. Sixth caution flag with six laps to go. And Terry Labonte's dreams of winning the Daytona 500. It, it's no coincidence. An it's no coincidence, Mike and Larry, that you get down to the end of the race, we have these kind of things happen. It, I mean, you, like I said, you just can't give anymore. Well, it looks like the three car of Austin Dillon got into the back of the 31, gave him a shove, and it got him loose. And I think Ryan Newman in the 31, Darrell, was checking up for something in front of him. Plus, it just as he was about to turn off in the corner as well. He got a little bump. Here's another look. Watch the cat Chevy of Newman, 31. Man, it just, that little bump, and it's just, it turned him. It's just in that vulnerable spot going into that corner. The car's a little free right there. Casey Mears in that 13 somehow got through there. I think he's done that all night. <laughs> he has. This happened back about 14th place. Dale Earnhardt Jr. trying to win the Daytona 500 yet again. Brad Keselowski for Roger Penske trying to give the captain his second victory. And remember, it was Dale Jr who gave Keselowski his big break to drive Junior's car in the Nationwide Series. Now, right behind them, Jeff Gordon, the 24, Kyle Busch in the 18, coming from one lap down, Carl Edwards and Denny Hamlin, Jimmy Johnson and Ricky Stenhouse, Matt Kenseth and Kevin Harvick are the top 10. And wins this year count more than ever. You win it, you might be in the chase. It might be the win you need, and it's a chance to get one right here. Kelly Earnhardt Miller, Dale Jr.'s sister looking on, and here we go, green flag, two laps. Dale Earnhardt Jr. gets to that restart box, and he is gone. Yeah, that car is, I mean, it takes off. Now, he definitely doesn't want to get too far out. We know that's not good, and he is making a pretty good gap here. Here Better comes watch. the two. Brad Keselowski on the outside, got a little bit of help from behind, Gaining on the leader, Junior comes up to cover. Jeff Gordon now leading the inside row, unless Keselowski or Bush or Denny Hamlin in the 11 drops down. It's Hamlin. What a move by Hamlin. Woo now, if we get back to the white flag, we have a race. Look at Stenhouse in that 17 in the middle, back and forth. And Boy, back he and just forth. shoved Kyle Bush right out of the way. Ricky Stenhouse in the 17, the third place. White flag with Stenhouse up in position to challenge in that blue four. You know what, Larry? I believe that tape's going to stay on there, and that baby's going to come home a winner. Denny Hamlin has not lost a race this week. He's number 11. Keslowski, the 2012 champ, battling back to the top. And Dale Earnhardt Jr., the Pied Piper of Daytona, trying to hold them all at bay. And Kyle Busch was trying to make a third line at the top of the racetrack. Boy, here they come. Now, this is where it gets interesting. We've seen a lot of passes off turn four than a start finish line, but that 88 is pulling away. Less than a mile to go. Oh, we got a wreck. Third generation star, Dale Earnhardt Jr., brings him to the flag. Checkered flag waving. It's over. It's Earnhardt. Good job, June Bug! Woo! Reed Sorensen's race ends up in a crash. Harvick into the wall past the end of pit road, and Carl Edwards 99 all torn up. Here comes Kyle Busch backwards across the start finish line. Factor across. Now, the caution flag waved before Earnhardt took the checkered flag. Officially, the race ends under yellow. NASCAR will review all. I cannot all. believe it. <laughs> Unbelievable. They'll review all photographic and video evidence. It'll be a while before we have an order of finish. Reed Sorensen is okay. Carl Edwards moving around in his car. 
the Pied Piper leads them around for the final lap. And then how can you take some bad luck? Get something on your grill with three laps to go. A piece of tape. You couldn't come down Pitt Road and put a piece of tape on there and do any better. The black number three returned to Daytona this week. Where'd that big piece of black tape come from? <laughs> Remember, in the offseason, his crew chief, Steve Latart, said to Dale Jr., this is our final season together. Let's make it memorable. They already have. It's yes, awesome, sir. dude. I can't quit watching you right now. Steve Latart, his crew chief. A champion of the Daytona 500. I've said it, and I've said it, and I've said it. Those two guys are going to do a lot of good things this year together because they, they, they know what it means. But Dale Earnhardt Jr. has gone winless in four of the last five years. You won't be able to say that about 2014. Or keep counting his runner-up finishes in the 500 yeah, because that, that 88 back car, to victory though, lane. That thing could get out front, and he could just go from one side to the other. I mean, he, he was just had a fast car at the end of the day. I believe Dale Earnhardt Jr. has got a little celebration planned here. See what he's going to do. He's not a whole lot he can do right now. The whole front straightaway is full of wrecked cars. He is saluting the fans and coming all the way down the front stretch, reminiscent of when Alan Kowicki won his first cup race and did a self styled. As Kowicki called it, Polish victory lap. It's the wrong way around, but it puts your face right in front of the fans where he can look them in the eye and hear them cheer. You know what I love? I mean, to see Dale Jr. that excited, to see him just pumped, man, about winning that race, and he should be, but look at him. He's like a little kid in there. Yeah, I don't Enjoying know if I've ever ever seen him that pumped up. No, I haven't either, Larry. It's just so good. And the biggest hug to Steve Berg, the gentleman at Hendrick Motorsports that works entirely on the restrictor plate super speedway program. Dale Jr. 10 years ago celebrated out in the grass here at the Daytona International Speedway, his first 500 win. And a hug with the big man himself, owner Rick Hendrick. Dale, does your second Daytona 500 win take on even greater significance considering the, the journey you've traveled over the past six years? Yeah, I think so. Man, this, uh, winning this race uh, is the greatest feeling that you can feel in this sport. And uh, aside from obviously accepting the trophy for the championship, I didn't know if I'd ever get a chance to feel that again. And it feels just as good, if not better than the first because of how hard we tried year after year after year, running second all them years, wondering why and, and what we needed to do. And I got to get my head together. I got to thank National Guard, uh, that Mountain Dew, all our sponsors, uh, Kelly Blue Book, Chevy and Sprint, uh, and, and my team. This race car was awesome. We showed them there all night long how good a car we had. And it's because these guys are right here putting it together in the shop, man. That thing would do anything, nobody. We could fight off battles after battles. And uh, we got a little help at the end from Jeff to get away on that restart and just sort of try to take care of it from there. It was, uh, this is amazing. I can't believe this is happening. I'll never take this for granted, man, because uh, this just doesn't happen uh, twice, let alone once. So just real thankful. Thanks to all my fans out there for supporting us. We pretty much uh, might be in the chase. Ain't going to worry about that. 
Get that off our chest. And we're two times Daytona 500 champion. This copyrighted telecast may not be reproduced, retransmitted, or used in any form without the authorized written consent of NASCAR Broadcasting. NASCAR would like to thank all of our loyal fans for your continued support, and we hope you enjoyed today's broadcast.